Hello everyone, happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. All right, that's great. So welcome to the today's YouTube live session, which is the past five clinical MCQs, a lot of concepts uh, to be reinforced uh, with these five MCQs, very, very important. So let's start with it. And before that, I want to give you one quick update on what's happening on the platform. So we have the QBank 2.0, which is coming up uh, very, very soon on the platform. And based on that, we have QBank 2.0 challenge as well, which is ongoing. So basically, we will have 15 questions, 15 minutes, which are there. And uh, please take that Qpoint 2.0 challenge because if you are in the toppers, like the top 50 students, then you will get, the, uh, you know, the Unacademy Lite subscription as well for free. So Unacademy Qbank 2.0, the features are it has more than 18K class questions and they are all case-based, image-based questions, which you will see similar questions in the exam as well. And soon we are going to have a price hike for the NEET PG subscription. So let me tell you each one of you that if you are planning to take a subscription, then you can do it uh, very soon because uh, we also have this thing that is an academy accelerate where you save up to 42% and this is valid only till August 12th. That is 12th of August. This, this is valid. You will get free extensions also. You can use the code Dr. Nikita while you are subscribing. Let me just give you a quick glimpse into what is the pricing and what you will be actually paying. So if you take six months ka subscription, you will get one month extra. With 12, it is three months extra. With 18, it is four. And with 24, it is six months extra. So for six plus one, that is seven months, based on the current value, it is 27,500. But if you take till August 12, you are only going to pay 20,250. That is saved 26%. So similarly, the longer uh, subscriptions you take, the more you are saving. So uh, choose the best subscription and you can take that. And I'm hoping to see you all for the live classes there on the platform as well. So remember, this is still 12th of August. Uh, apart from that, we have also launched the live doubt clarification sessions at 10 p.m. every day for one hour. You have 19 subjects, 19 educators. I'll be taking up radiology doubts or even your preparation related doubts that will be catered to in these sessions. So we will have the radiology discussion on 17th of August, right? Uh, apart from that, there is the ongoing uh, NEET PG 2023 test and discussion bath, which is also going on. We'll have MCQ discussions and then towards the end, you will have quick wrap up of the theory as well, right? Okay, so let's start, uh, let's start with the first question here. Uh, please read the question and start answering. Uh, Sukhbi, the best way to get the list of the most important topics is to just have a look at the previous year questions uh, for the last three years or so. Hi, happy afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. So I see a lot of those good afternoon messages scoring in. Okay, so I see some answers coming in. Yes, absolutely right. The correct answer here is page edge disease. Why? Because based on the radiograph itself, what do we see in the radiograph? What is the skull radiograph basically showing what appearance? 
what is the skull radiograph showing you can see those white white areas in the skull that's basically like the cotton wool so this is the cotton wool skull which is seen with paget's disease right so look at all the points which are given here and which will support the diagnosis of paget's 55 year old so false paget's occurs in the elderly 55 60 65 right then you have complaining of a bone pain, diffuse constant bone pain. He does note that his favorite fitted baseball hat no longer fits. So the hat no longer fits. What is that called as? Basically the skull increases in size. That is something called as Tamoshanter sign. Right, the Tamoshanter, there is this frontal bossing falling in the head. The skull increases in size. Right. Apart from that, uh, what do we have? There's no focal point of tenderness. There's mild frontal bossing and bilateral tibial bowing. All these are features of Paget's disease. Okay, all these are features of Paget's disease. What are the other clinical features that a patient of Paget's can have? One we saw is yes, there is a bone pain. Second, the heart is not fitting. Third, there is tibial bowing. What else can the patient have? The patient can have sensory neural hearing loss as well. Why will the patient have sensory neural hearing loss? Because the hallmark of Paget's is cortical thickening. Okay, the bone cortex thickens. So the hallmark of Paget's is cortical thickening. So what happens? The internal auditory meatus, okay, the internal auditory meatus through which the seventh, eighth nerve is going. Even there, there is cortical thickening. So what happens, the cortical thickening tries to compress on the 7th, 8th nerve. So that leads to the nerve compression that leads to sensory neural hearing loss. Apart from that, pathologically, if you see in pages, there are those abnormal fistula in the bone. Whenever there is fistula in the body, it causes uh, pressure on the heart and that leads to your heart failure, right? So the patient can have heart failure as well, right? So remember all these features for pages. Another very, very important point for Paget's, tell me in the lab findings, what is increased, what is normal out of calcium, phosphorus and alkaline phosphatase? What is increased and what is normal in Paget's? Yes. Absolutely right, Sukhbir. It is alkaline phosphatase, which is the only one which is increased. Calcium and phosphorus is normal. Okay, remember this point because the bone turnover, alkaline phosphatase is a marker of bone turnover. The bone turnover is high in pages. So the alkaline phosphatase levels are high. Calcium phosphorus is normal. Opposite findings, that is basically where you have alkaline phosphatase is normal. Calcium phosphorus is high. This is seen with Calcium phosphorus increases, but alkaline phosphatase is normal. This is basically a finding with multiple myeloma. Okay, that is a finding that we see with multiple myeloma. Then the next one, which is that bone condition where it is all normal. Calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, everything is normal. Very, very important and frequently asked that is osteoporosis, right? In osteoporosis, all the lab findings are normal. Okay, so remember all these are the important points for pages. Apart from that, uh, tell me the radiological, the other radiological findings in uh, pages. One, what is the appearance of the vertebra? What vertebral appearance does it lead to? The cortical thickening basically leads to the appearance. The cortical thickening leads to the appearance of picture frame vertebra, right? We have the picture frame vertebra because of the cortical thickening. It can also lead to ivory vertebra, right? The ivory vertebra. In the long bones, right? In the long bones, a lytic lesion, which looks like the blade of grass. So you have the blade of grass appearance or the candle flame sign as well. And third in the skull, one we said is the cotton wool skull. And we can also have osteoporosis circumscript. Okay, osteoporosis circumscripta, that's a well-defined light lesion involving the frontoparietal bone. Okay, so all these are the important findings basically in pages. Remember the age group is elderly. Okay, the age group is elderly. 
For ankylosing spondylitis, it's relatively a young patient with low backache, right? The SI joint and HLA B27 is positive. HLA B27 is positive, okay? So, this was about the first question. Let's go to the second question here and tell me what do you think is the answer to this one? Sixty-five-year-old new onset aphasia and left-sided homonymous hemianopia. Which vascular territory is involved? Absolutely right. It's the middle cerebral artery. Why do you say it's the middle cerebral artery? Even if you are not able to see anything in the CT scan, where is the pathology? But the finding of aphasia is a very important uh, clue in middle cerebral artery infarct. MCA basically supplying the brokers wala, to se aphasia hoga. What is the CT scan showing? Let's have a look at the CT image, okay? So look at this, the arrow. What sign is being shown in the CT image, anyone? What sign is being shown here? So basically, this is the sylvian fissure. The surrounding is the insular cortex. So we see the hypodensity, the insular cortex is lost. There is insular ribbon sign or the loss of the insular ribbon. The infarct basically leads to cell death, edema. That edema leads to hypodense appearance in the infarct. So we have this hypodensity surrounding the insular area. So loss of insular ribbon is what we are seeing here. And this is basically where you have the middle cerebral artery running. Okay, in the sylvian fissure, the M3. So, middle cerebral artery infarct is basically what we'll be seeing here. That is, aphasia is an important finding here. Okay, anterior cerebral artery. Agar anterior cerebral artery was involved, if there's an ACA infarct, what is the classical finding in ACA infarct? This is a previously asked question. What is the important clinical findings in the ACA infarct? ACA basically supplying the paramedian areas and here you have the leg area. So basically there is leg paresis, leg, the lower limbs are affected. There can be urinary incontinence as well and personality disorders are also there. Okay, personality disorders. Acillar artery supplying, that's basically the posterior circulation, the pons and the medulla. A lot of cranial nerves coming into play. So that leads to cranial nerves involvement. It leads to dysphagia and all of that. Lacunar territories, lacuna means a lake sort of thing. Lacunar infarcts are basically due to those perforating arteries being damaged. So, in that case, you have pure motor, pure sensory, like localized ones is what we have. Posterior cerebral artery will have visual complaints along with alexia or dyslexia is what we'll be seeing with the posterior cerebral artery. That will not have aphasia, right? So aphasia is a very important clue here that this is MCA territory infarct. Okay, this is MTA, MCA territory infarct, right? So yes, uh, that was the uh, question number two. And if I ask you the question that what is the most sensitive investigation okay what is the most sensitive investigation for ischemic stroke what is the answer to that what is the most sensitive investigation for ischemic stroke is it ct or is it mri remember it is mri because ct scan can be normal in the early stages which sequence of mri even in that it is DWI MRI, diffusion weighted imaging, where basically the acute infarct shows restricted diffusion. Okay, the acute infarct shows restricted diffusion. Now, if I change this question, this is how the question, few words here and there, the question changes and the answer changes. What is the first investigation that you will do in a patient of stroke? Be it ischemic stroke, be it hemorrhagic stroke, the first thing to be done is CT scan, non-contrast CT scan, basically to rule in or to rule out hemorrhage because that is what decides the management in a patient of stroke. 
If there is hemorrhage, then thrombolysis is contraindicated. If there is no hemorrhage, then we can do thrombolysis, right? So the first investigation is uh, in stroke is basically non-contra CT. For ischemic stroke, the most sensitive is MRI, that is DWI MRI, okay? So that was about the second question. Now let's go to the third question. What do you think is the answer to this? Hmm, I see a lot of confusion here. So I think microbiology we are done in the daily targets, the telegram group pay, the timetable that we are following. So why is there this confusion here? Okay, let's try to decode this question. Okay, let's try to decode this question. First, the question here is basically asking that uh, which of the following is the most likely causative organism? And the image has been given, the clinical picture has been given and this also has been given. So first of all, the most important thing to be, uh, you know, identified is whether this is gram positive or this is gram negative. What organism is it? Is it gram positive or gram negative? Right. So remember that. So gram positive is basically purple organisms. And gram negative is basically pink color, right? Remember when I write pink, pink is basically negative. When I write purple, purple is positive. So the purple color tells you that this is gram positive. So tell me if it's gram positive, what option is ruled out? What option is ruled out if it is gram positive? Pseudomonas is gram negative. Okay, pseudomonas is gram negative. So pseudomonas is ruled out. After that, the next that we have is, what is the appearance here? Chain, this is the gram positive cocci, the circular ones in chain. Which of these is gram positive cocci in chains? Right, it is your streptococcus. Okay, streptococcus, it can be enterococcus also. Basically, it is. it comes under group D streptococcus. So, clostridium is ruled out because basically it's a bacillus. So, it's a rod. Staph aureus is gram positive cocci in clusters, grape shaped, right? Grape shaped hota hai, clusters mein hota hai. So, clostridium ruled out, pseudomonas ruled out, staph ruled out. Now, the next that we have is the clinical picture, which shows the redness here of the skin. So, basically, this is cellulitis, okay? Cellulitis. And which of these causes cellulitis? It is streptococcus pyogenes, right? It is streptococcus pyogenes that causes uh, cellulitis. So what do we have here? 55 year old man, diabetes mellitus, there is fever, chills, nausea and swelling. High temperature is there, tachycardia is there, warm, tender, erythematous rash. So what is a causative organism? This is streptococcus pyogenes based on this image. Okay, based on this image, streptococcus pyogenes. Now tell me what uh, what antibiotic sensitive or resistant is basically streptococcus pyogenes? What antibiotic do we use to confirm that this is streptococcus pyogenes? It is bacitracin sensitive, okay? Absolutely right, Priyanka. So remember that streptococcus pyogenes is bacitracin sensitive. Okay, it is bacitracin sensitive. What is uh, what is the mnemonic there? It is B BRAS. Okay, so basically for bacitracin, okay, bacitracin. Group B is resistant. Group A is sensitive. So we have streptococcus pyogenes here. Okay, we have streptococcus pyogenes here, which is your group. 
A. Okay, that's your group A. These are basically beta hemolytic valley streptococci, right? The beta hemolytic. The group A, which includes streptococcus pyogenes, that is sensitive. Okay, that is bacitrecin sensitive. Remember that point? This is bacitrecin sensitive. Okay, bacitrecin sensitive. And one of the recent KBMDs we discussed, uh, which uh, streptococcus is bile soluble? Bile solubility, bile soluble is lung wala, pneumonia wala. That is streptococcus. Pneumonia is bile soluble. What antibiotic testing do we do for pneumonia? P4P. It is optochin sensitive. Okay, remember it is optochin sensitive. So your alpha hemolytic streptococcus pneumonia tha just me. It is optochin sensitive. Okay. Here with everyone. So this is uh, about your streptococcus pyogenes and which is causing cellulitis. It can cause the other conditions like scarlet fever. It can, it is associated with rheumatic fever, right? All those are the other diseases associated with streptococcus pyogenes. All right. So that was question number three. Let's go to the next question. Question number four. So, there are multiple clues here in this question to help you come to the diagnosis. Very correct. So, I see almost all of you getting this right. The correct answer is persistent leukocytosis. Why? The question is, the patient is at greatest risk for which of the following? What does this patient have? It's a two-year-old boy, recurrent infections. Most important, there is no purulence and there is absent CD18. Okay, so all these points put together. There is recurrent infections with no purulence. That means the pus is not there. There is no CD18. So, this gives you the major clue that the diagnosis here is leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Right? It is leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Adhesion is 18. Remember, it is CD18 which is deficient. So, beta 2 integrin basically is not there. What is the role of this beta integrin? To help the WBCs attach to the endothelium. And after that, the WBCs come out to the site of infection or inflammation and there is pus formation. So, what is happening? There is no beta 2 integrin, there is no CD18. So, basically, these WBCs are not able to attach and come out. So, there will be no pus. That is why it is non-purulent. Because all the WBCs are in the blood, they are not going into the tissues. So, there will be increased WBC count. That means there will be neutrophilia remember leukocyte adhesion deficiency has neutrophilia and not neutropenia what is the other important history in leukocyte adhesion deficiency is delayed umbilical cord separation okay the umbilical cord separation is delayed okay that's another important history there okay so these are the important points with leukocyte adhesion deficiency uh, infection following live virus vaccines is basically seen with what condition? When there is T cell deficiency, right? That's why in immunodeficient patients, we don't give the live vaccine. Infection with Neisseria, recurrent Neisseria infections is a hallmark of which condition? Recurrent Neisseria infections is a hallmark of Late complement deficiency. Remember all these points very very important. Late complement deficiency that is C5 to C9 complement deficiency. Small or absent lymph nodes basically is seen with Bruton's X-linked A gamma globulinemia, thrombocytopenia, eczema. This is a component of the triad of Thai. Thrombocytopenia, eczema and infections. This is basically seen with Viscott-Aldrich syndrome. Okay, Viscott-Aldrich syndrome. 
जो यहाँ पे नहीं है पेशेंट को ओके सो दैट इज दिस इज नॉट विस्कॉट एल रिच इंपॉर्टेंट नो प्यूरस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एबसेंट सी डी एटीन इज ल्यूकोसाइट अडेशन डेफिशियंसी ठीक है सो दिस वॉज क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर लेट्स गो टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन द फाइनल क्वेश्चन ह्योर what do you think will be answer to this one this is an interesting question here Okay, I see a lot of mixed answers here. Someone is saying C, B, A. Okay, tell me what's the diagnosis. Let's see who has got the diagnosis right. This is uh, not angiodysplasia of colon. What's the diagnosis? Yes. Basically, yes, mesenteric ischemia, that is your ischemic colitis. This is not IBD. This is ischemic colitis. Why? Because this is a patient complaining of abdominal pain while passing stool and there is some blood in the stool. Then there is MIA history six years ago. There is decreased bowel sounds. The right femoral and dorsal spadis pulses are weak. So all this basically tells you that the patient got MI. So that means decreased blood supply to the heart. Dorsal spedis femoral pulses are weak. So that means everywhere basically there are atherosclerotic changes. There is narrowing which is occurring. So similarly, this is occurring in the bowel ka blood supply also. So basically, this is the history of ischemic bowel that is ischemic colitis because you have the history of MI. You have the history of weak pulses that this patient has. basically the diagnosis here is ischemic colitis like widespread atherosclerotic changes so ischemic colitis will have mucosal hemorrhage and there is patchy areas of necrosis because of the ischemia the necrosis is setting in right so that is what the answer is going to be bowel stone mucosa transmural inflammation all these are features of transmural inflammation bowel stone remember c for c this is seen with Crohn's disease. Okay, this is seen with Crohn's disease. Then septic abscesses, multiple pseudo polyps. These are seen with ulcerative colitis. Okay, this is not ulcerative colitis. Neoplastic cells infiltrating beyond the lamina propria. Basically, this is malignancy. That is the CA colon. Okay, that CA colon. Macrophages with accumulated fast positive granules. Very very important. frequently asked question this is the finding seen with whipples okay this is the finding seen with whipples macrophages with pass positive granules that is whipples the diagnosis here is ischemic colitis so basically there will be mucosal hemorrhage and patchy areas of necrosis what do we see radiologically with ischemic colitis what do we see radiologically with ischemic colitis there is um print sign okay what do we see is the thumb print sign which is basically the hostrations which become edematous okay the ischemia causes to the edema thickening of the hostrations that gives the thumb print sign okay that gives the thumb printing all right so yes i believe that uh, completes the five questions let us quickly revise what are the five questions that we saw today the first one this is pages seen in elderly with bone pain hat no longer fitting Uh, bilateral tibial bowing so this is pages okay this is pages in pages remember alkaline phosphatase is high calcium phosphorus is normal the next one that we have hypodensity insula ribbon sign aphasia that is basically middle cerebral artery car territory okay that's the 
middle cerebral artery mca in fact then we had the next one where we had gram positive purple cocci in chain so it's streptococcus and cellulitis streptococcus pyogenes right it is streptococcus pyogenes causing cellulitis then the next one that we had recurrent infections 2 year old no purulence absent cd18 all of this is leukocyte adhesion deficiency beta 2 integrin is not there so there is persistent leukocytosis or neutrophilia okay remember that is neutrophilia thrombocytopenia eczema infection all this is seen with viscot elrich syndrome and the next that we have blood and stool myocardial infarction weak pulses all this basically tells you that it is ischemic colitis everywhere there is atherosclerosis leading to the decreased blood supply so ischemia basically leading to necrosis and mucosal hemorrhage that is what will be the finding that will be seen okay that is what will be the finding seen okay so that was about the today's fast 5 mcqs when are we meeting next is again at 5 pm we have the plus class of radiology the ongoing uh, radiology course where we are discussing the mcqs and the recently asked pyqs the pyts right so we will have the next class this is for the plus subscribers radiology class and let me also again tell you about the accelerate program which is till august 12 right and you will have significant off if you subscribe till the 12th of august you can use the code dr nikita okay thank you so much everyone for uh, joining in i'll see you at 5 pm again and we have the next youtube session another fast five clinical mcqs tomorrow at 11:30 am okay 11:30 we'll have the next session thank you so much everyone goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you